Shalom, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I have, first of all, I have to apologize for the, um, we're a bit late, you know, it's, it's from the studio, it's not, it's not from on my part. But uh, God will take the glory in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we are on, anyway. We thank God for that in Jesus' name. And you're welcome to the program in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And before we start, I'll just pray and dedicate the studio to the Lord. You see, Satan is upset. He's so upset, but he can't do anything. <laughs> the more he fights us, the more we keep moving. May God be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we pray in Jesus' name. Uh, Father, help me this moment to speak the truth and nothing but the truth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord God Almighty, let your angels saturate this atmosphere in Jesus' name and speak your word. And Lord, let it not be my word in Jesus' name. Let my voice be your voice in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God Almighty, I disappear, appear to your people in Jesus' name. Amen. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. So you're welcome to the program. Another day the Lord has made in Jesus' name. And, and today the Lord is let, let there be light with Chimezi Okonkwo in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So you're welcome to the program. And I say shalom again in Jesus' name. And, and today's topic, the Lord has titled it the construction industry. The construction industry. You see, whatever you do in life, you are part of the construction industry. The first industry that ever existed was the construction industry. When God said, let there be light. That was the language of construction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says he brought things into being by those spoken words in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everything we seek to achieve in life has to go through the channel of construction in Jesus' name. It's a building process in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The hiccups, the many failures, the storms, the great successes, the disappointments, they're all part of the construction process in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And you don't back down in Jesus' name. The Lord will be with you in Jesus' name as you as you build in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are all employed in some sort of construction work or another, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I say, I'll say this, if, you're, if there is a construction industry, then there is a deconstruction industry, there is a destruction industry, there is a demolition industry. You, you must be very careful so you don't fall prey to the, to the letter in Jesus' name. May God be glorified in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you see, the government, the uh, emergency services, uh, every aspect of life, every aspect of society and life is a, in the process of building the society, empowering the society in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, energizing the society, making the society relevant in this present world in Jesus' name, and be part of it in Jesus' name. Now we'll go to 1 Corinthians 3 verse 6 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3 6. Now listen to, to what it says. It says, I have planted... Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Construction, construction, united construction. There must be unity for construction to take place in Jesus' name. He says, I have planted, he must be speaking the same language. I have planted Apollos watered. I'll call you back, please, after the program in Jesus' name. He says, I have planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So everybody had the, has a role to play. But Paul said he planted Apollos watered. But the increase came from God in Jesus' name. Construction without God is impossible. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you must involve God. It's teamwork. You must involve God when you are building in Jesus' name. Let's go to Genesis chapter 11. May the Lord be glorified. Genesis chapter 11. And I'll start reading from, I'll read from verse 1. It says, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. The whole earth. This was from the beginning. It says the whole earth was from one language and from one speech. Uh, and one speech. So I read from verse 4 to 9 now. It says, And they said, Go, the people, go, go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. <laughs> whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name. They were, they, they, they were eager to make themselves a name. The Bible says God gave Jesus a name that is above every name. The Bible says David made himself a name when he smote the Amalekites. So the name is the, what men are, are, are fighting to preserve, their names. He says, and let us make us a name. That was the, the intention, one of the origin, original intentions of man, to make himself a name. Lest we be scattered abroad. The same thing, the Bible says in the book of Job, it says what the thing he greatly feared came upon him. The same thing that men feared eventually came upon them. He said, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. They were trying to outsmart God. Even today, men are still trying to outsmart God. 
It says, upon the face of the whole earth. And in verse 5, it says, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. Very important. You must be speaking the same language. And this, begin, and this day begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Imagine that what unity can, can, can bring. It says when they are united and they speak one language, nothing is impossible for them. And in verse 7 it says, go to let us, the same us that made the world, in the beginning God created the world, let us make man. It says, go to let us go down and therefore confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad. The same issue they were scared of about, it was what came upon them. The Lord scattered them ab abroad from thence upon the face of the earth, of, of, of all the earth, and they let off to build the city. They were scattered and they couldn't build again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Have you tried uh, uh, partnering or getting into a business or uh, 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 getting involved in something that should be positive and all of a sudden it scatters? Then verse 9 it says, Therefore is the name of, the, of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of the people, of all the people, of all the earth. And from there did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. God scattered them. Why? Because they did not involve God. They were trying to reach to heaven, but they did not involve God in the, in the project, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Anything or any project without God brings confusion, chaos, and sometimes terror. Look at what is happening in London, stabbings, shootings, and everything. Where are the fathers? The construction industry. They didn't build their homes. May the Lord be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. On my last trip to Israel, I discovered that, uh, this, in fact, this, that was the first time I, I ever had it. That was in February. I discovered that the U.S. dollar bill had the, uh, uh, the sign, the symbol on the back of it, of, of, of uh, uh, the star of David. Now, I believe that was intentional. That was involving God in, in, in their matter. Imagine. And that is the only foreign currency, as long as I'm aware, that is the only foreign currency you can spend in Israel. And not only in Israel, in different countries of the world, about 10 countries of the world or more even. You can spend the U.S. dollar. You can use it and buy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So they, they involve God. That's why they have, in God we trust, they in, involve God from the origin. That's why they, it's like they dominate the financial world in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Why by the grace of God, this country dominates the language because the country gave the word, the English language, may the Lord be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you must be involved with God. Otherwise, you will scatter in Jesus' name. Now I ask you, what is the language of the church? What is the what language does the church speak? The Jews speak Hebrew. The Muslims speak Arabic. What does the church speak? The church doesn't have a language. English language is not the language of the church. Speaking in tongues is not is not the I wouldn't call it the language of the church because if it's the language of the church, you understand yourselves. You understand one another. When you are speaking in tongues, you understand what this person is saying. But God is only the spirit that he brings that revelation. A young man came to our, to, our, to our church in January. Sometime, sometime in January. He came the first time. The service was just over. And then he came. And then the next Sunday he came again. And after that, he didn't come again. So I called him, you know, and, and because he was very interested. Because he saw I am my, he said he saw I and my children, you know, on the TV. And he was, he, they, they actually brought him to church. <laughs> so... I was interested. I wanted to find out what made him not to come again. Why wasn't he coming again? And he, and he opened up to me. He said to me, you were speaking in tongues. You, the church was speaking in tongues, but there was no interpretation. So, the, so that, that clearly told me that speaking in tongues is not the language of the church. <laughs> Even the church speaks it to, to, to have dominion over events spiritually. But do you understand what I And I'm not that type of pastor that, that, or, 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 or so-called prophet that will come and speak in tongues and say the Lord said when the Lord has not said. Because a lot of people do it just to manipulate people. The Lord said. I, will not, I, I, I don't do those kind of things. May the Lord be glorified in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, what is the language of the church? The church has no language and that is the confusion. I believe that the, confu the, the people of the earth that we are confused because of the way uh, Christianity is today, I believe Christians, we are th those ones. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we must build together in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, may God be glorified. Let's go to the book of Ezra. As the Lord leads. Ezra chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. 
you must build with people speaking the same language with you. It says, now when the adversaries, the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, let us build with you. Their enemies came to build with them. It says, let us build with you. Don't build with an enemy. He says, let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Ashur, which brought up us up hither. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, we ha ye have nothing to do with us, to build a house unto our God. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord our God, unto the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, had commanded us. Then the people of the land, then the people of the land weakened their hands. Adversaries now stared up to stop, to stop or derail their work or to, or to manipulate their work to stop them from building. It says the hands of the people of Judah and they weakened them and they tried, they attempted to weaken them and troubled them in building. Because they will not accept. Whenever you, uh, you make up your mind, you're not going to build with the enemy. The enemy fights like a roaring lion. <laughs> but he's not a lion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In verse 5, he says, And hired counselors against them, weaken them, trouble them, now hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. May the Lord be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This church has more enemies than friends. <coughs> Excuse me. May the Lord be glorified. What is the motive of your building? Why are you in church? What is your purpose? Is your purpose to help build the church? Or you are seeking, uh, 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 you have a motive of uh, why you are in church. Maybe you thinking the, uh, maybe the pastor should help you get into ministry. A lot of people, that's why they come to church. You must be careful with that in Jesus' name. If the Lord has not called you, I was in churches, going from church, different churches than I was. I, I, you know, I, I spent several years here, different years here, you understand? And in different places, the pastors will tell me, you have calling. And I say, until God speaks to me, I will not go into the ministry. And I was determined that I will not go into the ministry. Except I heard from God. <laughs> Today, everybody wants to be in the ministry. They see you on TV, they think it's easy. They don't know the attacks. They don't know the, 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 the wars you, ha you have to fight. <laughs> May God be glorified. God is good in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What is your motive? A young man, I, 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 took, I was led and I took him on a TV program, one, one, of, one, one of our shows. May God be glorified. I took him on one of our shows. And after that, by the grace of God, and you know, I have respect for him. But after that, it's like he started pestering me. And, and, I, I, and God spoke to me. God spoke to me that I must be very careful. And God showed me his, that his motive was not to help the church, but how he can uh, 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 enter the ministry through the church. You must be very careful so you don't fall into that category. That's a very dangerous category to fall into. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I told him, I told him, he's calling, he's, he's calling me, asking me, oh, pastor, when are you taking me on TV again? And another time he called me and said, oh, he saw I am my wife, himself and my wife on the TV program. And I was praying and the Lord said to me, the Lord was asking me, where will you be if he saw you and your wife, him and your wife on TV? Then where are you? He said, I gave you that assignment, that mandate. You must not hand it over to any. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I told him exactly what God told me. I said, God said, I must listen to him and obey him. Don't try to manipulate me. I'm, I'm, I'm working for God in Jesus' name. And I'm, and I'm doing it with my heart in Jesus' name. May God be glorified. In the book of Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, I'll build my church. He says the gates of hell. But I say the gates of Sambalat and Tobias will not prevail against it. In the, in, 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 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the book of 1 Kings 7.51. 1 Kings 7.51. May the Lord be glorified. Oh, sorry. I was wondering. First Kings 
He said, don't cry. He says, so was ended all the work that, the, that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord. And Solomon brought in the things which David, his father, had dedicated. Solomon built, but David dedicated. David prepared for that house in Jesus' name. Now, Solomon takes the glory, he built the temple. But the temple was actually built by, 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 by David, spiritually. He says, he brought in all the things that David, his father, had dedicated. Even the silver the, and the gold and the vessels did he put among the treasures of the house of the Lord. May God be glorified. You must be in agreement with God. You must agree to agree with God. Or agree to disagree and you're in problem. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now we'll go to First Chronicles 22 again. May the Lord be glorified. First Chronicles 22. And I start from verse 5. In Jesus' name. It says, And David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be builded for the Lord must be exceeding magnific magnificent of fame and of glory throughout all countries. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. David prepared for the house that Solomon takes the glory for today. <laughs> Then he called, in verse 6 it says, Then he called for Solomon his son and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. Solomon only obeyed David. And in verse 12 he says, Only the Lord. Now Solomon, David now spoke to Solomon. David was the one that told Solomon what to ask God for. And it, Solomon takes the credit that he, has, he is, the, uh, he is the, most, the wisest man that ever lived. And I will not say it's David, and there's a reason why I will not say it's David. Now listen. In verse 12, he says, Only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding, and give thee charge concerning Israel, that thou mayest keep the law of the Lord thy God. So David was the one that initiated that wisdom. Solomon knew at that point, this is what I should ask for. And then in verse 14, he says, Now behold, in my trouble, David is saying, listen to what he did. In my trouble, in pain, in his challenges, he says, I have prepared for the house of the Lord, and a hundred thousand talents of gold, and a thousand talents, a thousand thousand talents of silver, and brass and iron without weight, immeasurable. For it is in abundance, timber also, and stone have I prepared, and thou mayest add thereunto. What did he add? David prepared for that house. In verse 16, he says, Of the gold, the silver, the brass, and the iron, there is no number. Arise therefore, and be doing. And the Lord be with you. That was his releasing his son to do the work. Without that release, Solomon would have struggled. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. David made comprehensive provision for God's house. May the Lord be glorified. A few weeks ago, I was meditating on the word. I was preparing for uh, the message on the uh, church service uh, on a Sunday. Uh, well, it was a Sunday morning. I was just going through the message. And the Lord spoke to me clearly. The reason why David didn't build the house was not just because he, his hand was soiled with blood. It wasn't just because of that. That David couldn't build the house because he couldn't build his own house. His son rose against him. His son defied his own bed. <laughs> As with this conqueror, Absalom chased him out of the kingdom. How can your son? David with all the power. David, a man of war. And his own son chased him out of the kingdom. That that was why, the main reason why Solomon, uh, David couldn't build his house. God spoke to me. This was few, two, about two weeks ago. May the Lord be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now let's go to 1 Timothy 3.5. 1 May the Lord reveal in Jesus' name. 1 Timothy 3.5. It says, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Your ministry, your first ministry starts from your family. If you can't build your family, look at what is happening today. Where are the, those people stabbing themselves? Where are their fathers? And I wouldn't stand here blaming the, the mothers because I know, you know, usually they say women are the weaker vessel. But there are strong, strong women that have raised their children normally, sane, and they are sound. Where are the mothers too? Where are the fathers? Mainly. For if a man knows not how to rule his own household, how can he take care of the church of God? 
How can you build the house of God if you can't build your own household? You start learning ministry from your own household. Your household is broken and you're forcing, trying to force your way into ministry that God has not given you a mandate. May God be, be wise and may God be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Family, I say, is your first ministry. Family. And listen to me, family I'm talking about, family I'm talking about is your, your, yourself, your wife, and your children. I'm not talking about your parents. Your parents, yes, they are family, and you must take care of them because of the promise, a blessing of life, longevity, and success. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But the family I'm talking about, they, if you check the dictionary meaning of family, the first definition you see is parents and their children, father, mother, and their children. And that is the family I'm talking about. M inclusive parents. But parents are in a special space. Apart from that, the rest of them, I call them concubines. Concubines. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because a lot of people get confused. They mix up their marital life, their marital relationship with their father's house. Your house is not your father's house. Your father's house is not your house. It's a different thing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you. That's why you have chaos. Because you have tried to merge the two together and there's serious problem. They, they can't agree. Mother-in-law problem. Usually it's mother-in-law. I wouldn't say father-in-law because usually it's mother-in-law. You must be wise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, leave your father and your mother and be joined to your wife. It's a clear instruction. Your family is yourself, your wife, the first family, yourself, your wife, and the children. Others can come. You must take care of your parents. Most, they are, I say they, are, they have a special status in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Both your parents, your wife's parents. But... All these ones to call brother, sister, uh, 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 what do you call them? Uh, uh, cousins, aunties, all those ones are concubines. Concubines. Be very wise in Jesus' name. That's why God said to Hezekiah, put your house in order. Put your own house in order. And some people are busy trying to put their father's house in order and their lives are in disarray. I told somebody recently, and he got upset. I said, try to build your own life. And every day he's sending money to Nigeria, fight altar. Altar is fighting him. Altar is fighting him. Send prayer people. I say, you are wasting your, your destiny. That's why you are confused. And he got upset. And at me, I'll tell you the truth. May God be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to 2 Samuel 7. Second Samuel 7, uh, 12 to 13. Now listen to what he says. He says, and when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed, this was to David, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Now, physically, it was, uh, it was uh, speaking about Solomon, but spiritually it was Jesus. And then in verse 33, it says, he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Solomon, the Bible said, the Lord, Solomon perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel. Even though he messed up along the line, but the Lord had established him king over Israel. So physically it was Solomon. Spiritually, it was Jesus Christ. You must be his spirit in Jesus' name. And then if you go to 1 Kings 6.14, it says that Solomon completed what he started, the house he started. John 19.30, Jesus said it is finished in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And if you are building, keep building. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let God protect you in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I rededicate your life to Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And let this message teach you and minister to you. In Jesus' name. And I say what? Shalom. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. See you next week. Shalom.